So, let's talk about the one and only Maxi Priest, a name that's synonymous with reggae music. Born as Max Alfred Elliott, this Jamaican English artist has carved his own path in the world of music. Maxi Priest was born on June 10, 1960, in Lewisham, London. He's known for his smooth reggae sound that effortlessly combines reggae, R&B, and pop elements. His career has spanned several decades, and he's still going strong. Maxi's journey in music began at a young age. He was part of the South London reggae sound system Saxon Studio International, where he honed his skills and gained experience performing in front of audiences. In the mid-1980s, Maxi Priest burst onto the international music scene with his debut album You're Safe. However, it was his 1988 album Maxi that catapulted him to stardom. The album featured the hit single Wild World, a cover of Cat Stevens' classic, which became his breakthrough track. Wild World achieved chart success in the United States, reaching the top 30 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Maxi continued to release chart-topping hits and albums throughout the 1980s and 1990s. His unique blend of reggae and R&B resonated with audiences worldwide. Some of his other notable tracks include Close to You and Set the Night to Music with Roberta Flack. One of Maxi's remarkable achievements is being the first reggae artist to have a number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in the United States. This milestone came with his collaboration on the track I Just Want to Be Close to You with American singer Lisa Keith in 1990. Maxi Priest's contributions to reggae music and his ability to cross over into mainstream pop and R&B have earned him a special place in the music industry. His smooth vocals and timeless songs continue to captivate audiences around the world. In recent years, Maxi Priest has remained active in the music scene, releasing new music and collaborating with other artists. His enduring legacy and ongoing commitment to his craft make him a true icon in the world of reggae and beyond. Maxi Priest is not just a musician, he's a musical sensation whose melodies have touched hearts across generations. It's important to remember the artists that contributed to dancehall and reggae in a big way, because these people have left an indelible impact on the music and culture. Our culture didn't start today, so go back and listen to them. You know we should start giving credit to our pioneers of the music and culture. And to those who came first and paved the way to music that left an indelible mark so many individuals' heart throughout the world. So let's not forget them. By remembering the people and the moments that shaped the music and our culture. Reggae and dancehall is the most influential genre ever. Subscribe to the channel if you like what I am saying because it's free. Liking and subscribing don't cost a thing. Come back to Renegade Crew TV. Thank you and goodbye. So, there's this incredible Jamaican artist, Kevin Anthony Jackson, but you probably know him as Sanchez. He's a hometown hero, born in Kingston, specifically in the Stony Hill and Waterford areas. You know how nicknames stick, right? Well, he got his because of his mad skills, they started calling him Sanchez in reference to a footballer with the same name. Now, this guy's been singing since he practically learned to walk. He began his musical journey in the Rehoboth Apostolic Church Choir in St. Catherine. Talk about starting from the roots. Before he made it big, he was working with various sound systems in Kingston. He began as the selector for the Rambo Mango sound system and then transitioned into recording his own tracks. His breakthrough came in 1987 with the hit Lady in Red, produced by Red Man. By 1988, he was the talk of the town and had a legendary performance at Reggae Sunsplash where the crowd couldn't get enough. They called him back for six encores. He kept churning out hits like Loneliness Leave Me Alone, produced by Winston Riley, and his version of Tracy Chapman's Baby Can I Hold You. That last one even made it onto the number one album produced by Philip Fadis Burrell in 1989. Sanchez didn't stop there. He collaborated with some of Jamaica's top producers like King Jammy, Bobby Digital, and Donovan Germain. Fast forward to the 2000s, and he's still making waves. His album Simply Being Me climbed to number 14 on the U.S. Billboard Top Reggae Albums chart and stays on my mind hit number 9 in 2002. While he's known for his love songs and covers of pop and R&B hits, the 90s saw him blend gospel themes into his albums alongside other topics. 
In 1999, he released the entire gospel album Who Is This Man and followed it up with He's Got the Power in 2003. But here's a twist. In 2012, he surprised everyone by revealing that he'd become a full-time producer. He teamed up with studio engineer and writer Rodney Tenor Lyon. By May, he had his hands full working on two self-produced albums, one in the dancehall genre called Like a General, and the other, a gospel album titled There Is No Other Like You, Lord. Most people can't relate to the world of hurt and pain of losing a child. Kevin Jackson has lost his 21-year-old son last year in 2022. A sad day for the singer Mr. Jackson, Sanchez, his family, and the community of August Town. What's even more heartwarming is how the community celebrated his achievements. Recently, they honored him by naming a road after him, Sanchez Drive. It's located in the Park Lane community, right off Red Hills Road. It's not every day a local legend gets a street named after them, right? Sanchez is undoubtedly feeling the love and appreciation from his community and fans. This legend's voice transcended reggae's borders and ventured into the hip-hop realm. Collaborations with hip-hop heavyweights like the Wu-Tang Clan and Guru showcased his universal appeal. Hits like One Blood Under W and Ja World left an indelible mark, making him a sought-after figure in the hip-hop scene. In 2006, he teamed up with West Coast hip-hop artist Game for the chart-topping sensation It's OK, One Blood, which not only conquered the billboards, but also became a sensation in the gaming world, featuring in Def Jam, Icon. From Mims to Jim Jones, Max B, Mel Matrix, Fabulous, Fat Joe, and many others, his collaborations with hip-hop's finest continued. It's true that some artists prefer to keep their personal lives and journeys quite private. Delroy Thompson, who goes by the stage name Pinchers, is one such artist. Born on April 12, 1965, He's a Jamaican reggae and dancehall artist who has made his mark in the music world, even though he tends to keep much of his life under wraps. Pinchers began his musical career as a teenager in Jamaica, where he released his first album for Blue Track Records. However, his journey took an interesting turn in 1985 when he made the move to the UK. In 1987, he gained significant fame with the release of the single Agony, which was also the title track of his album produced by the renowned King Jammy. Around the same time, in 1987, Pinchers recorded the Mass Out album, produced by Philip Fadis Burrell and backed by a stellar lineup of musicians, including Sly and Robbie, Jackie Mitu, and Robbie Lynn, among others. In 1990, Pinchers dropped another major hit, Bandolero, which remains one of his most iconic singles. This track solidified his presence in the music scene and is fondly remembered by fans. Notably, he also released tracks like Carpenter, Call Upon Me God, and Cross the Bridge in 1993, further showcasing his talent and versatility as an artist. However, it's not all about the music for Pinchers. In January 2015, he was involved in a shooting incident in Queenborough, Jamaica. During the incident, he and a group of men were shot at, resulting in two fatalities and pinchers sustaining injuries to his left arm, including two broken bones. Despite the privacy surrounding his life, Pinchers has made a lasting impact on the reggae and dancehall music scenes with his unforgettable tracks and unique style. It's important to remember the artist that contributed to dancehall and reggae in a big way or even in a small way because leave an indelible impact on music and culture. Our culture didn't start today, so go back and listen to. You know we should start giving credit to our pioneers of the music and culture. And to those who came first and paved the way to music that in some many individual heart throughout the world. So let's not forget them. By remembering the people and the moments that shaped the most influential genre ever. Subscribe to the channel if you like what I am saying because it's free. Liking and subscribing don't cost a thing. Come back to Renegade Crew TV. Thanks and goodbye. So, let's talk about an amazing Jamaican reggae artist, Vaughn Wayne Charles, but you probably know him better as Wayne Wonder. He's got quite a journey in the world of music. His early days were all about dancehall and reggae, but as time went on, he ventured into hip-hop and rap. 
Now, if you've ever heard his music, you'd probably agree that one of his most popular tracks is the 2003 hit No Letting Go. Now, let's dive into his backstory. Wayne Wonder was actually born in Buff Bay, Portland, Jamaica. It's interesting to note that he was already singing in Sunday school as a kid. His musical journey really kicked off when he attended Camperdown High School in Eastern Kingston. At just 13 years old, he started writing songs, and things started looking up when he scored a regular weekly gig at Metro Media in Almond Town. Now, let's talk about his big break. He auditioned at Sonic Sound Studio, and while Sly Dunbar was pretty impressed, he couldn't sign Wayne because of his touring commitments with Black Uhuru. However, he struck gold with King Tubby, who produced his first single, Long and Lasting Love, back in 1985. Two more singles followed suit. Unfortunately, Wayne's career took a hit when Tubby was tragically killed in 1988. He continued recording for other producers at Sonic Sound and had another hit with It's Over Now. This led to the release of his first album, One More Chance, even though his success during this period was somewhat limited. But here's where things took a turn for the better. Wayne's luck changed when he started collaborating with Dave Kelly, an old friend from primary school who had become the resident sound engineer at Penthouse Studios. This partnership delivered a string of hits, starting with Saddest Day. They also teamed up for Wayne's second album, Part 2. In 1990, Wayne Wonder's live performance of Alphaville's Forever Young was recorded and later released to Alphaville fans in a limited cassette-only album called History. He even toured the UK in 1992 alongside other penthouse stars. Wayne didn't stop there. He recorded Bonafide Love, Movie Star, with Buju Banton and penned several early hits for him, including the controversial boom Bye Bye. He toured with Banton again in 1994 as part of the penthouse showcase. He also formed bands like Alias and later Entourage with Kelly, Baby Cham, Frisco Kid, and Frankie Sly. In 2000, Wayne decided to launch his own record label, Sing So. His 2000 album Divide marked the beginning of his incorporation of hip-hop into his reggae sound. He collaborated with some major artists, including Jason Dalarimple of Soul for Real, Foxy Brown, and Lisa Left Eye Lopez. His move towards hip-hop continued with his 2001 album Schizophrenic. Here's where it gets even more interesting. Wayne's career truly took off on the international stage when he signed with Atlantic Records. His global breakthrough came in 2003 with the hit No Letting Go. This track was based on the Diwali rhythm, and it became a sensation not just for him, but for several other artists like Sean Paul, Lumity, and Missy Elliott. No Letting Go reached number 11 in the U.S. and number 3 in the U.K. With No Letting Go and his album No Holding Back, Wayne Wonder became a sensation on urban radio stations in the U.S. This led to the release of several compilation albums featuring his earlier work, like Trojan Records' In Abashment Style, The Roots of an Urban Warrior in 2005. Wayne didn't slow down. He released For Eva in 2007, which reached number six on the U.S. Top Reggae Albums chart. His album My Way dropped in December 2012. Oh, and here's a fun tidbit. In October 2014, he made an appearance on Nevermind the Buzzcocks during the Identity Parade. So, that's a glimpse into the fascinating journey of Wayne Wonder, a reggae artist who has left his mark on the global music scene. Barrington Levy, hailing from Clarendon, Jamaica, kickstarted his musical journey by teaming up with his cousin, Everton DeCurs, to create the band known as the Mighty Multitude. Their musical debut came in 1977 with the release of My Black Girl. Levy's solo career took flight in 1978 when he dropped A Long Time Since We Don't Have No Love. While the initial single didn't make waves, his electrifying performances at Jamaican dance halls began earning him a dedicated following. Behind the scenes, record producer Hyman Wright played a pivotal role in shaping Levy's early career. Wright recorded a slew of tracks with the young talent before introducing him to the influential Henry Junjo Laws. These tracks later found their way onto the album Bounty Hunter. Levy's musical journey was punctuated by a string of chart-topping singles, including the likes of Shine Eye Girl, Wicked Intention, Jumpy Girl, Disco Music, Reggae Music, and many more. 
He also dropped albums like Shaolin Temple, Bounty Hunter, Shine I Gale, a UK sensation, and the critically acclaimed Englishman. The world soon caught wind of Levy's talents, particularly in the United Kingdom, where he gained considerable fame. Hits like Here I Come climbed to number 4-1 on the UK singles chart in 1985, solidifying his international status. Not content with just singing, Levy took a turn as a producer in 1981 with the release of the showcase album Run Come Ya. As the 1990s rolled in, Levy continued to release hits in Jamaica and occasionally in the UK. His distinctive vocals found their way into numerous underground and jungle tunes. He even graced the stage of the iconic BBC One music show Top of the Pops in 1991 alongside Rebel MC and Tenor Fly with their track Here I Come. In 1998, a collaboration with Bounty Killer and Snoop Dogg on Living Dangerously breathed new life into Levy's career, especially in the United States. Levy's musical journey continued with collaborations, including appearances on tracks by Handsome Boy Modeling School, Slightly Stupid, Rascals, and more. In 2013, he released the single Love the Way She Love in collaboration with Mr. Vegas and teased an acoustic album featuring both new songs and reimagined classics like Prison Oval Rock and Black Roses. This album, Acoustic Olivia, received a Grammy Award nomination for Best Reggae Album in 2016. Levy's enduring impact on the music scene was underscored in 2021 when he featured on the Gorillaz track Meanwhile. In 2023, Barrington Levy's stature in the music industry was further solidified as Rolling Stone magazine ranked him at number 119 on their list of the 200 greatest singers of all time. He even graced the West Holt stage at the Glastonbury Festival that year, a testament to his enduring influence on the world of music. You know we don't usually give credit and flowers to those who came first and paved the way. So let's give them it where credit is due. Let's not forget the moments that shaped the most influential genre ever. Subscribe to the channel if like because it's free. Why should you care about this next artist? Because you're not a Jamaican or a fan of reggae if you don't. He should have been on this list for reggae slash dancehall collaborators that shaped this genre of music we love so dear. Who is this Beers Hammond? Born as the ninth child in a family of ten, he started out being the end of the line. Hammond's formative years were steeped in the melodic sounds of American soul and jazz, resonating with the soulful tunes of Sam Cooke and Otis Redding, as well as the indigenous rhythms of Ska and Rocksteady, especially the works of Alton Ellis. His venture into the world of music began with local talent competitions between 1972 and 1973, eventually leading to his first recording, a rendition of Ellis Wando. The year 1975 marked his entry into the band Zap Pow as their lead vocalist, a move that would culminate in the release of the hit single The System in 1978 under Aquarius Records. Simultaneously, he embarked on a solo career, releasing his debut album, Soul Reggae, in 1976. His solo tracks, such as One Step Ahead 1976 and the Joe Gibbs produced I'm In Love 1978, found considerable success in Jamaica. In pursuit of his solo aspiration, Hammond parted ways with Zap Howe in 1979, and went on to release two more albums, Let's Make a Song 1980 and Red Light 1981. He also formed Tuesday's Children, a vocal harmony group that toured extensively but never recorded any material. Establishing his imprint, Harmony House Records, in 1985, Hammond solidified his presence in the Jamaican music scene, with chart-topping tracks like Groovy Little Thing and What One Dance Can Do, which bore the influence of the emerging dancehall genre. While settling down in 1986 further cemented his international recognition, a disturbing incident compelled him to move from Jamaica to New York City in 1987, 
Despite the upheaval, he continued to create music, producing the album Have a Nice Weekend, collaborating with Maxi Priest on the duet How Can We Ease the Pain. A return to Jamaica resulted in the recording of the notably harder-hitting album Putting Up Resistance. Produced by Tapazuki, spawning hits like the title Track and Strange. Signing with Penthouse Records in 1990, he found further success with the dancehall anthem Tempted to Touch, laying the groundwork for subsequent hits like Is This a Sign and Respect to You Baby on the 1992 album A Love Affair. His popularity continued to soar with the critically acclaimed single Fire in the same year. As his career progressed, Hammond released multiple albums in the 1990s, solidifying his position as a prominent figure in the lovers' rock genre. The new millennium witnessed the release of the 2001 album Music Is Life, featuring collaborations with Wyclef Jean and producing hits like They Gonna Talk, Rock Away, and Ain't It Good To Know. Guest appearances by Buju Banton and Big Youth added to his musical legacy. Shortly before his album One Love, One Life received a Grammy Award nomination in January 2014. In 2019, Hammond embarked on the never-ending tour across the United States and Canada, captivating audiences with his timeless music. On February 28, 2021, featuring guest appearances by esteemed artists such as Buju Banton, Marsha Griffiths, and Popcorn. In recognition of his outstanding dedication and soulful musical artistry, Beers Hammond was bestowed with an award on August 20, 2023. By the Jamaican Museum and Cultural Center in Atlanta, solidifying his esteemed position in the annals of musical history. It's important to remember the artists that contributed to dancehall and reggae in a big way, because these people have left an impact on the music and culture. Our culture didn't start today so go back and listen to them. You know we should start giving credit to our pioneers of the music and culture and to those who came first and paved the way to music that left an indelible mark so many individuals' hearts throughout the world. So, let's not forget them. By remembering the people and the moments that shaped the music and our culture, reggae and dancehall is the most influential genre ever. Subscribe to the channel if you like what I am saying because it's free. Liking and subscribing don't cost a thing cup. Back to Renegade Crew TV. Thank you and goodbye. Garnet Silk, a name that reverberated through the beats of the 1990s, left an indelible mark on the dancehall scene with his emotive voice and soul-stirring melodies. Born Garnet Damien Smith, this Jamaican Rastafarian brought a new fervor to reggae, captivating audiences with his diverse and powerful vocal range. His journey to musical stardom was not without its trials, beginning as the young and spirited little bimbo, weaving his way through various sound systems before eventually embracing his true calling as Garnet Silk. Silk's career was a tapestry of collaborations and encounters, from his alliance with Tony Rebel to his transformative sessions with producers like King Tubby, Prince Jammy, and Donovan Germain. His musical metamorphosis was marked by a significant shift, from DJing to singing, a change that solidified his place in the industry. His 1992 debut album, It's Growing, proved to be a watershed moment with the poignant Hello Mama Africa resonating far beyond Jamaica's shores and affirming his international acclaim. His profound spirituality, influenced by his Rastafarian faith, 
infused his music with a depth that resonated with audiences globally. Hits like Zion in a Vision and Thank You just spoke of a profound connection to his beliefs, sparking a wave of introspection and consciousness within the dancehall culture. Silk's unwavering commitment to his faith not only shaped his music, but also served as an inspiration for many in the reggae community to explore their own spiritual paths. Tragically, his promising journey was cut short on that fateful day in 1994. The devastating loss of Garnet Silk, as he attempted to rescue his mother from a blazing fire, sent shockwaves through the reggae world. His untimely demise was a profound blow, leaving a void that echoed throughout the dancehall scene and the hearts of his fans. The tragedy not only marked the end of a remarkable musical career, but also served as a poignant reminder of the fragility of life and the enduring legacy of an artist who, in his short time, had left an unforgettable imprint on the soul of reggae. Despite his physical absence, Garnet Silk's legacy endures, inspiring countless tributes and posthumous releases that keep his music alive. His son, Garnet Smith Jr., has stepped into his father's musical footsteps, ensuring that the Silk spirit lives on in the rhythms and melodies of the modern reggae landscape. Through the echoes of his timeless music, Garnet Silk remains a guiding light, a testament to the power of music, faith, and the enduring influence of a soulful voice that continues to resonate with each beat of the dance hall.